Good evening. Romans 5, 6 says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for the upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinning, sinners. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. We thank you so much for joining us here in this evening. Thank you for taking this time to study with your family together the Word of God. We pray that this word, this, this worship set may bless your life in a great way and that you can be in the presence of God for the rest of the, for the, rest of the evening, for the rest of the week. And we hope that this word changes your life today. We hope not only that, but that it transforms the way you, that you think, your behaviors, your character. My prayer for you today is that God's reckless love may change you in such a way that you can tell others what he has done for your life. Let's pray. Father, we come before your presence and we thank you for this Wednesday night. We thank you that we have this opportunity to come together once again and study your word and sing praises to your name. Lord, I pray that we may open up our hearts, that we may open up our minds, that we can listen to your word, and not only that, but do it. Lord, we give you the rest of the night for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me. All oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you gave yourself away. All oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no word, still you paid all for me. You have been so, so good to me. All oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you gave yourself away. All oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow, it won't light up. 
mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me one more time there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you gave yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God Hi guys, how are you doing uh, today, this fine day that God has given us? Um, I want to speak about a, um, a little bit of something that um, I hold dear to my heart. Um, this is one of the things that um, I'm, pa I'm one of the things I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about uh, many things, um, believe it or not. <laughs> <clears throat> but this is one of one of the things that um i hold true and dear to my heart because it is something that i've actually experienced um in my life so as you can see i'm in my room once again um if you hear any noise weird noises screaming yelling door slamming ignore that okay you guys know i got kids so let's get right to it so i want to talk about um a story in the bible that it's actually one of my my favorite stories like i said um it's something that i'm passionate about one of the things and one one of these as you know many other stories is one of my favorite ones um and it's about um when jesus healed the paralyzed man um when his friends um lowered him through the roof I'm um, not sure if you guys are familiar with that story or not, but you can find it in Mark uh, chapter 2, um, verses 1 through 12. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm not going um, to, I don't, I'm not going to read the whole chapter or whatever. I'm just going to just tell you a little bit about it. And then I am going to read some scripture though along the way. Um, so it, this man, um, he was paralyzed he was on his uh, on his mat um and in this time jesus had returned to uh capernaum that's the town um where he came you know to preach and everybody started hearing about it and whatnot and everybody wanted to get close to all the action because you know jesus was the action um you know, like people were either nosy, they wanted to know what was this Jesus about, what he was, um, you know, preaching. They wanted to see, you know, the miracles and whatnot. And, you know, he was like a celebrity. So imagine you guys, you know, seeing your most favorite celebrity, you know, you're gonna wanna like, oh my God, take a picture with me, take a selfie, you know, like all, act all crazy and stuff like that. Um, 
I like to think that I will never do something like that, but you never know. You know, one of my favorite celebrities. Um, I have so many. I can't even really even think about which one I would really go crazy over, you know? Um, so at in this town where he was at at this at this moment he was he was crowded like you couldn't get around him anywhere um you couldn't get to him um and i like this story a lot because for many for many things many 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 things but this time um i saw it in a different perspective and it's one of um it's a, the beautiful thing about when you read the Bible and when you study it, it's like God opens your eyes and you see things in a different way and um, you appreciate it a little bit more. So um, now that I've I'm aware of what you know, I'm what, what I'm going to be talking about, it has become one of my most favorite, you know, stories because it's just it's beautiful. It's powerful. Um and you know whatever and just ignore my bangs because they're dirty anyway so um like i was saying there was nowhere to get around to him um you know to to get close to him you know if you wanted to say hi or introduce yourself or whatever the case may be like there was no way no access point to get to him because everybody was just like so like I imagine it like sardines, like they were just so crowded together, like and pushing and shoving and, and whatnot, you know? Um, and like I said, this man was paralyzed, so he couldn't really walk. Um, well, he couldn't walk. He was, um, you know, laid out a mat that he had. Um, and I, I can picture that this mat was carried, um, um, like, you know, like if his, like if he wanted to get around, either he would drag himself somewhere or like you know his friends would you know pick up the hit the mat with him on it so like you know four friends you know one each grab each corner and you know go about his way um this is what i'm picturing and what i i'm imagining so um this this group of friends decided um you know that they wanted his their friend to their paralyzed friend to be healed so um they took him like you know they carried him um and they carried him up to a roof now the way i it works in my mind i picture it as um i don't know if anyone has seen aladdin um especially like the the new live action one um where you can actually see like the how the buildings and the houses were like you know when they were running away from these people and you know jumping over roofs and you know doing all these flips and whatevers um i i picture it as that i don't know if you remember like in one scene they were going up the stairs but the stairs were on the outside of the building and they were you know they were on the roof so that's how i pictured it um you know they they were able to bring them up the up up those stairs to the roof, and then in that roof, they um, they dug a hole, you know, through that roof. And I just want to stop right here, and I want you guys to think about it real quick. And it's like, yo, those friends, they vandalized somebody's home for their friend. They broke the roof, they dug the roof, they, whatever they did, they vandalized property. And it's like, you know, it's the first time I'm like, wow, like when I read this, I'm like, wow, like these friends are like true to their friend. Like they wanted to help them and they wanted to, um, you know, make his friend get healed so he can be able to walk. And they went to the extreme. They broke a roof. They dug through the roof somebody's roof like i hope it was one of their their own roofs their own friends roofs mm. but do you have friends that would do that <laughs> that would break a roof for you or, or or dig through something to like help you or whatever like do you have friends that even have that faith that listen i'm i'm we about to break this roof down because you're gonna be healed in the jesus name i believe that like that's some crazy faith you know um 
and it's just so it's so crazy and so you know amazing that you know it, it uh, like you have, you know, a group of friends or maybe two or maybe even one that would go to the extreme to help you, um, that love you so much, that care for you so much, um, and to go to through the lengths, you know, to do that. Um, and like I said, it's just something so special. And I've, and I, um I find I find everything like it's just like sometimes like you know I'm pausing so much because I keep thinking about it and it's like it's really something it is so special to have friends like that that you know actually go through the lengths of craziness sometimes you know and I want to ask you, like, do you have friends like that? Do you think you have friends like that? Sometimes uh, we take the word friend and like, oh, he's my friend. He's my friend. She's my friend. Yeah, that's my buddy. Yo, that's my man. That's my dog. Whatever. <laughs> um, and some other words that I'm not even, it's not appropriate, but whatever you know, to describe your friends or your best friends or whatever like that. And sometimes they're not even your real friends to tell you the truth at all. Like sometimes they're just, you know, what the, you call those fake friends. Um, and I just want to share with you guys something um, which I did not have planned <laughs> to even share in this video, but I feel like I need to. Um, you know, I do have, you know, many of you guys who know me, you know, know I do have, you know, a, you know, a good friends. And I have that one special friend, you know, who we met in weird circumstances that we thought that we look, we talk about it now. And it's like, I don't know, like God had a plan and stuff and something because at that time, where I met her, you guys know it's Kayla. Hello, <laughs> uh, you guys know, or not you guys know, but um, when I met her at that time, I was in like a lonely, dark place, and I would ask God, and I remember this, and I would like, I was like, you know, ask God to just give me one friend. You know, I've, you do have, like, I did have friends that, you know, I would call or hang out with. Actually, I'm lying. Like, I never really had someone to really hang out with like that. And, you know, um, to share just, you know, silly moments or stupid moments or something like that. Like, um, there is family that I consider, you know, my friends that I have or I should say the other way around. I do cuz I have I have friends that I consider family as well, but because you know we're it, it it's family, you know, cousins or whatever. But it was not ne never never like something as as special as our friendship has. And I remember at this time that I would ask God. I was like I need I I want a friend. I want you to give me a friend. Um because I I need it. Like you know, I'm, I feel lonely. Um, I'm here. I'm by myself. You know, I, at that time, you know, yes, I was married. Um, I had, you know, my, the two, the two girls at the time. It was like, like 2013, 14 around there. Um, so I was like 23, 24. So I was kind of young, um, kind of not really into church. I would go, but I was like, you know that type of attitude and i just felt i remember felt feeling lonely i didn't have family i, I you know I, I didn't have family around me um at all and i remember like i said i just you know just felt blah you know like i wanted somebody to hang out with and you know 
be silly around and stuff like that and let me tell you this girl she knows the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> all right so um and i think i i only have a handful of friends that that know who who i am who truly who i am deep inside how crazy i am you know <laughs> crazy in a good way like silly or or you know acting dumb and you know like i can be myself i don't have to be i don't have to feel ashamed that they're gonna judge me or i don't have to feel like you know i they're like yo what's wrong with her why is she acting like that you know like i don't have to feel like that because they know who i am like i can i can i can do what i want i can be i can be who i want you know i can be myself so um and we met at that time she was living at her cousin's house and I went over because they were, you know, they were taking care of the girls and what one day and then she needed to go to the laundromat. So I took her and I'm like, kind of awkward because, you know, when you meet somebody new, it's like, how do you come up with a conversation? Like, how do you do that? So, um, I was like, so, you know, she's, she was new here. And I'm like, so, do you like Monticello? <laughs> and whatever, you know, like, we just started talking about and talking. And then, like, one thing led to the, the other. And then we were going on, you know, um, we were hanging out. We were going to services together, long trips together. Um, and that's, you know, we just started to develop our friendship and stuff. And then... Um, because of that, you know, my bond, I, I want to say that my bond with God, um, grew closer because it's important when you have godly friends that, you know, they motivate you in, in a way and, it, and it's been all like back and forth, you know, back and forth, um, with us, you know, that type of relationship and whatnot, um, and it's so beautiful when, you know, God is the center of the friendship um, because, you know, when one is feeling down, the other lifts up and vice versa. Um, you know, you, you pray for the person, um, you motivate the person, you encourage the person. Um, and that's basically what our, our relationship lies on, you know, apart from all the silliness and all the craziness and stuff like that, mostly on my end, you know, I'm not going to rep her, you know, or give her a bad image or whatever. Um, but you know, and even the bad, like, you know, how, how different we are and our, you know, character wise and it's, you know, it's beautiful that, you know, she was able to accept me as I am with my flaws and all. So that's how I know that, you know, God had laid everything down and, you know, laid everything out for us, you know, for us to become best friends and whatnot. And now, like, we talk every single day. Um, and my husband jokes about it because, you know, he says that I love her more than him. <laughs> so, um, and it's just, it's funny. But um, I do, you know, I do want to give you um, three, three, I do want to give you three of scriptures um, about, you know, three qualities of a friend. And they're all found in, in the book of Proverbs. Um, so the first one I want to read is Proverbs 12. Hold on one second. Proverbs 12, 26. And it says that the godly give good advice to their friends and the wicked lead them astray. So like I was saying in the beginning, I don't know what type of friends you hold or what type of friends, you know, you, you consider. Um, but if they're leading you to the path of evil, you know, per se, like, you know, giving you bad examples or whatever the case may be. Are they really your friends? Um, you know, are they giving you good advice? Are they motivating you? Are they encouraging you? Are they praying for you? Prayer is a powerful thing. Hands down. 
and prayer moves mountains prayer moves your worries prayer moves your afflictions um prayer moves everything so do you have friends that encourage you and do all these things that lead you to the path of Jesus ask yourself that who are your friends you know your friends from school wherever your work I don't know family whatever do they lead you to those good things you have to, you know, ask yourself. And sometimes it may hurt because the answer may not be what you're expecting. You know? The other one is uh, Proverbs 17. 17. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in the time of need. A friend is always loyal. A friend is always there. You know? A friend is always there to, to pick you up when you're down. A friend is always there and tells you the truth when you don't want to hear it. Sometimes we have those type of friends that will tell us whatever we want to hear. Because it sounds good. Because, you know, deep down inside we don't want to hear the truth. But sometimes the truth is necessary. The truth hurts. The truth hurts like crazy. Best believe that. But the truth is what we need to hear. If you have a friend that tells you the truth, regardless of what the situation is, regardless of whatever um, the consequences are, keep it because that's a loyal friend. A loyal friend is always true and a loyal friend is always honest. Um, and then the next one is Proverbs 27, verse 9. It says that the heartfelt counsel of a friend is as sweet as perfume and incense. You know, you want to, you like to smell good. But do you smell good in the inside? How is your inside? Is it rotten? Or is it sweet like perfume? You know, a friend's counsel can put a lot into that. Does a friend's counsel, um, like I said in the be earlier, does it, your friend's counsel, is it truthful? Is it loyal? A friend's counsel, does it motivate you? Does it encourage you? Does it bring you life? Does it breathe life in you? Or is it the total opposite? Does it smell like death? Does it reek of I don't know what can smell worse than death. I don't know, death, fish, I don't know, something. You know, like rotten fish, rotten eggs, whatever it is. I think these three scriptures are, are, are the, the three qualities of a good friend. And I believe that the four friends from the book that or the i'm sorry the the scripture we were you know paraphrasing in the beginning of the paralyzed man i believe that they had that because they were willing to vandalize somebody's property um for their friend to be healed because they wanted the best for him um they wanted to to encourage him and motivate him you know, they probably wanted to, I don't know, go on trips together, you know, whatever, you know, you, 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 you need, you know, you're to walk, you need your legs or, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, maybe that that's what the cause was for. But the point is that these friends had the faith, they had um, that that push to bypass the crowd Think outside the box. I'm like, yo, we're going we're gonna to break somebody's roof down for you because you're going to be healed. And I believe that. And that's, that's crazy faith. And that's awesome. And it's just, it makes me even like this even more because it makes me appreciate my friendships more. 
you know, uh, my friendships with, with everyone that I have friendships with, um, you know, cause yeah, Kayla is, you know, she is the, my best friend, but you know, I do also have other friendships who, um, I hold dear to my heart because, you know, they are also godly friendships, you know, they motivate me and they encourage me, even though when I don't want to, they're still there for me. When I don't want to hear the truth, they will spit the truth out to me. And even if I get mad as heck, I still hear the truth. And there's still something stirring within me. I'm like, listen, she got a point. You need to relax. And you need to take everything in what she said. And you need to grow up. And that's how we grow up a little by little. You know, we grow up, we, we mature. That's how, you know, we build our character. And it's... Thank God to these uh, beautiful relationships, beautiful friendships that I have developed. And I know that you can do that too. I know you can develop that too um, through, you know, through this time. It's important to have godly friendships. It's important because I know miracles can happen through godly relationships. You know, you can share stuff that you can't share with anyone else because they're not on the same page as you, you know, like. I can't share, like, I don't really have friends that are not from church or whatever. But if I had one, it's like, yo, service was amazing. The spirit moved and, and God spoke. And they'll be looking at me like, what? The spirit, God spoke, what? Like, they won't, they, they're not able to understand. They're not able to comprehend. They're not, just, it's no point. You know, yes, it's good to talk to them about God and, 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 and witness, you know, to them the greatness of Jesus. And, you know, maybe they can come, you know, really good friends and you, you know, they can become godly friends. And that's beautiful, too, you know, as long as it's along those paths. But if you're not doing something to go along those paths and you're, you're just your friends because whatever, what's the point? What's the point? You know? So in this in in this time I do want to do a little bit something different and I do have a little bit of an interview. So I have three questions that um I invited Kayla um to ask, I mean to answer, sorry, to answer and let's just get this raw ball rolling. So the first question that I asked her was what does it mean to have godly friends? Okay, what does it mean for me to have a godly friend? I think having a godly friend is uh, the best friend you you can get. Um, there is always going to be um, trust. There's always going to be forgiveness. Um, there is always going to be encouragement for one and another. I think the most important thing of this is that God is always going to be the center of the friendship. And is God the center of the friendship, nothing else is going to happen. Nothing, nothing is going to break that friendship. The second question is, how do you show your friends that you care? How do I show that I care about my friends? I think um, being there for them when they need you, being supporter, supporting. Um, most important, being honest, um, being patient. Um, like in Proverbs, 1824 says that if you have friends be a friend and sometimes friends are closer than siblings so I think if if you have a good friend and you care about them you have to be there for them and show them that that not only you're a friend you're a family and there is there is love and that's that's how you show them that you care. And the third question is, would you vandalize a Ruth for me? 
will I break down a roof for you? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> the roof now is different than those times. Um, but yeah, I, I will do whatever is in my hands um, to help you. And I think if, if, if there is a time that you are in need, um, I'm pretty sure I will help you. And I will give you my hand as well as your family and everything. So if that's, that's the roof that you were talking about, so um, yeah, I will do it. Okay, so there you got it. Even she did tell me the truth. She will not vandalize a roof for me. Sad, sad, sad. But that's something that I expect of her, you know, to tell me the truth always. Um, that is why she's my BFF. Ooh, heart. Can you get it right? Let me see that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so at this time, I just want you guys to... Um, Think about what we spoke about. Um, you know, who are your friends? There's a saying that goes, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Because influence attracts. Influence is, is something that's so great, you know, so great. Um, you know, if you have certain friends that have you know, a certain way of speaking or acting along the way, you're going to start acting and speaking like them. But one thing is for sure, as for me, I don't want to speak or act like my friends. I want to speak and act like my one true friend. It's not Kayla. It's not my husband, but it's Jesus. I want to speak like him. I want to act like him. Um, I want to encourage and motivate people like him because Jesus is my true friend. So, all right. So that is all the time that we have now. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, remember to like the video, subscribe and comment. And I want to hear more about your friendships. Um, what keeps you guys going, especially in this time, you know, uh, you can't really hang together. Like, what do you guys do to um, encourage each other, motivate each other? I want to hear it. I want to read it. Um, so comment if you would like, because I want to know. All right. So see you guys next time and peace out. Love you all.